Namaskaram. Namaskar. Mm, yesterday you said something um, just in the side sentence. Um, nobody can see the pain of the guru. Um, so you were referring to something, um, and maybe you can say something more about this. What I said was, one has to see the pain of the guru okay. also. The guru undergoes a lot of pain. Perhaps the most painful thing is to see the other one suffering. When one, when one is breaking down the ego, then there is a lot of suffering that the other person endures. And that is what causes also a lot of pain, you know, because you know that you have to do what you have to do, even if it means losing that person forever. But one cannot compromise on these things. So when you see that kind of pain arising in the other, then it can cause a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Because you can feel that it's just also very unnecessary, I feel. Suffering of the other. Yes. Yeah. And there is also the pain when one is attacked. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I've been... I've been answering questions for 20 years now and I've had lots of students and in the beginning I was not really in that sense a guru but as I was a lot in India I got turned into one gradually and I have of course experienced pain when there is anger and real attacks, attacks on my integrity, attacks on my sincerity attacks, you know, questioning me in areas where the integrity is so solid that even to be questioned is just that painful. Mm -hmm. So that's the pain that the Guru has to endure. It's part of this work, you know, like everybody, everybody has to endure pain in their work. And that pain is also something which dissipates instantly when the surrender is there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it comes because it's quite extreme. Then one bends down, then it goes away. It's also a question of surrender because I'm not detached from my emotions. If I switch into detachment mode, then I'm, you know, then I'm just chanting. And because usual understanding of awakening or enlightenment is of eternal bliss and there's no pain and no suffering anymore, which is of course... Um, it's fully just, not, it's rubbish. Yeah, of course. It's. All the awakened masters who have been hurt, they talk about the pain they've had. Mm -hmm. The thing is that when there is a physical enlightenment, then there is detachment from the body, from the emotions. So that detachment also helps in bearing the assault. Mm -hmm. But when you are bringing a teaching which talks about embracing and not detachment, and it's very much present here and now, and it's not about enlightenment whatsoever, then the pain can be quite extreme and one has to move into surrender. It is a call to surrender. The students are calling the teacher to surrender. But in my experience, of course, the physical body or the emotional body um, reacts to offense or attacks. Yes. And, um, but somehow the deeper realms, the deeper parts um, cannot be heard, cannot be touched, yes. cannot be reached by anything from the physical level. So... Um, That's because you have an enlightenment experience. So it's a different story. Your reintegration into your body is in the process of happening. Being in awareness of impulse, of that impulse, is a process. So as you reintegrate from your enlightenment back into self-realization, processes will change. So pain is not anything which one can detach from anymore. Pain can only be transformed. So after enlightenment, one yes. has to go back into the mud. Yes. One has to go back into the body which might be in mud because one was enlightened, one has allowed it to go into the mud. One has to come back into the body and pull the body out of the mud and re-inhabit it. Yeah, pull it out of the mud because most of the time when people get enlightened, their bodies are 
in a state of detachment and their bodies actually lose the coherence. Mm. You know how it is, like the more enlightened you are, the more incoherent the system is. They don't speak so clearly, they don't think so clearly, they don't emote so clearly, their bodies are not really solid. So when they come back, they have to reintegrate and pull their bodies out of the mud of incoherence mm. and start to inhabit the body again, to reintegrate. But does this also mean to take part in the common actions happening between people and being part of... It won't be so easy. It won't be. Say, for example, sexuality. Yeah. Most enlightened beings, they, just, they can never have a sexual life again after that. They cannot experience sexuality because they have been permanently detached from that part of their yeah. experience. If there's no desire or no longing anymore, how can you experience sexuality? So what happens is that when the reintegration happens, yeah. the, the whole... So depending on how long and how intense the enlightenment experience has been, the reintegration will happen. If it is very extreme, it will not happen in this life. If it is not so extreme, then there is a reintegration possibility where, where the very cells of the body start to become more conscious of themselves. The reintegration process goes downward like this. First, they are, they are able to actually embrace through this chakra. Mm -hmm. Then the unity consciousness becomes more real and more vibrant and more present. Then the, the ability to create and also the occult abilities start to return art, occult, creativity, it starts to, to grow outward and laterally. Then it goes further down where the conceptual ability starts to deepen and increase. And it's not about the brilliant sentences that are formed, but the, but the content that is produced is of an intensity and a clarity which is much deeper and greater than it was before. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into the emotional. Okay. and finally into the actual material. So you can see maybe if you take a walk. There are people here in Tiruvannamalai, enlightened, like classical enlightenment. They are barely able to walk, they are barely able to cross the street, they are just detached from everything and they are just not able to function properly. Mm -hmm. Because technically in an Indian society they would be taken care of by others. Mm -hmm. But they don't have anybody to take care of them, mainly they are Westerners. Mm -hmm. So then that reintegration sometimes needs a lot of time and the coherence comes back in gradually, you know. Mm -hmm. Manoj, sit here. Chai ke liye aayo. De do inko chai. Chalo. Lekin aap bet sakte ho, if you want to sit, you sit. Acha, acha. Kya, susu kiya kya aapne? One has to go this way of reintegration because the pull is there or um, I mean, is this a necessary or an organic um, process which is happening anyway to complete? Yes. Okay. It has happened with all the masters. Okay. They did have to reintegrate but most of the time because the enlightenment processes were too extreme they were not able to fully reintegrate. So you will see it in the eyes. There is a detachment in the eyes from everything, you know. Because the integration is not complete. Mm -hmm. And that is something that has been aimed for in the spiritual trajectory till now. And now it's changing because we have understood that the more we are present and the more absolutely in surrender, the less we need to be detached because life is so joyous. Mm -hmm. And the detached one does not experience the joy of life. They cannot. Mm -hmm. It's a neutral state, but it is not a joyous state. It's a neutral state, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, it feels like going back into the mud. I mean, like yes. accept, accepting love from others. It's wonderful to love myself because it's unconditional, it's just flowing, it's not, it's not demanding an expression of my being. But accept, accepting the love of an other, um, especially women, for example, I experience their love as toxic. 
You experience it as toxic, Manik, because your system is asexual. Yeah. You understand? You don't have any sexual vibrations emanating from you. Yeah. But if you are with a woman who is not enlightened also, which means is not detached from the emotional, so what is happening then is that there is an expectation from you. Yeah. So love then for someone like that will include also the sexual, which traditionally and rightfully so it should because that's what the body is also experiencing as one-sixth of all the experiences. But you experience it as toxic because it is so alien to your system. Yeah, and it's demanding, it's jealous, it's possessive, it's all kind of... It's, um, it has yes. nothing to do with love, it's, it's something, there's something poisonous within Yes. Uh, which comes along um, or is hiding behind the love and tries to enter my system. And um, it enters my inner space and, and starts grabbing in it. Because you are not present. Once you have totally reintegrated, then you will be strong enough to also draw a line, which is what I was saying yeah. to you. Draw a line, you have to draw that line because otherwise soon you'll have scandals surrounding you. Mm -hmm. that, is a, that is a given. A lot of the spiritual masters, they have issues because, especially when they're men, because what happens is that they're detached and so in that whole loving state of theirs, they start to go into a giving, loving state and then they have the females who come to them who are actually not at all detached, so they're very involved and but not transformed either. So then they will move into motions with them which will lead to these emotions and the moment there's a second one, it's already over, the cat fight starts. Mm -hmm. Those are bodies that are desiring and you have to take responsibility. For them? For of course, for them, because if you are there at the center of a movement, and there are all these admiring girls around you and you are actually asexual because you don't feel anything sexual towards them but they feel something sexual towards you how are they going to feel if you don't respond? Is They're going to be angry? frustrated and angry yeah. where is that anger going to be directed? At whom? Towards me At you When two of them feel like that towards you what will happen? They'll join hands yeah. and that is what happens to most spiritual masters the moment it's a male spiritual master and you have women around you, you have to keep a clear line. Like this? Not like this, no. It's mm. not like this. Okay. It is like this. It's a Lakshman Rekha. It's not keep away from me. If you don't have a sexual vibration coming from you, that means they're like your children. Hmm? That means they're like your children. Yeah, okay, yeah. They're not partners or possible sexual partners for you. Mm. So then you have to say, this is the line. I can't do this for you. What I see a lot is that there's all this hugging and holding and touching and loving and... But true love does not need to hold that much and touch that much and turn in circles and we are all one. Because the experience of oneness is an individual thing, it's an internal process. And when it's really happening, the flow of love is different. It doesn't grab the other and hug the other and want to jump on the other. Mm -hmm. The thing is, if you feel that kind of emotion welling up and all, first, first hold it within, strengthen the, the container that is holding that emotion rather than letting it flow out everywhere. They have to hold that emotional experience and then when they hold it, that's what strengthens them. You know, too much of all this hugging and we love mm -hmm. you and you love me and then everybody loves each other and five minutes later they are anyway angry with each other. I see this from the Osho communes. A lot of the people who were in the, in the communes, they were, they were very loving and so, but they were very hard people. They were the hardest people, many of them. Mm -hmm. The love was all, you know, when Bhagwan was around and everybody was dancing and holding. And then mm -hmm. the moment it was about, the moment it was about sharing some money with somebody or sharing your cake with another person, suddenly the love was gone. <laughs> Selfish people, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that experience of emotional love is not held within the system but it's just donated outwards because they can't hold it because it's too intense. Hold the emotions and, and actually feel their intensity rather than immediately balance it out with 20 people around, mm -hmm. you know. 
and that is something to really look at as a possibility mm-hmm. because otherwise you'll it will grow this whole jealous field around you will grow and at one point you won't be able to bear it mm-hmm. and you don't have a few people around you you have quite a few mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah. thank you the problem with enlightened beings is that they are not vigilant because they are detached a little bit from everything no yeah. that's why i'm saying reintegrate reintegrate come back in be present take charge of this body again fully you know start to feel your master bend 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 mm-hmm. not that but this and then you'll be able to be vigilant enough to prevent any major issues from happening mm-hmm. because you don't want that in your community you know jealous cat fights and sexual stories it's it's just very tiresome boring hmm it's boring it happens everywhere and with every spiritual master but if whatever can be done to avoid it it's better isn't it one well, of the funny thing is one just wants to be with oneself one I talk about myself one just wants to be with nothing and suddenly all these things happen around and all this that is come. because you have to reintegrate that is life telling you manik enlightenment time is over now it's time to come back into the body it happened to ramana maharshi it happened to shri aurobindo it happened to ramkrishna paramahansa it happened to ananda mahima and all the others mm. it happens to everyone you have to reintegrate and you have the choice whether you do it better or you do it worse that's up to you the more you bend down the better it will be the less you bend down the worse it will be One last little question. There are no hands how, up, so you can ask. How is, how, is it, how can one become your student or your whatsoever? I mean, you're not offering any um, satsangs anymore. You said you will be. After March fifth, there are no satsangs. Yes, it's been actually twenty years of very, very much work, almost on a daily basis. So. After March fifth, Rishikesh, I will not be doing satsang anymore. I will not for a while. I don't know how long mm-hmm. and after that if it's permitted then yes again and then you can just come and attend okay. they'll send you the invitations yeah. and mm-hmm. and you should come because you're a spiritual master you have to really be <laughs> you have to come down now to the body and yeah. be present and surrendered you know you know it yourself that mm-hmm. it's happening to you and you have to keep an eye on everyone because the sangha will explode and when it's exploding it's run by people who are maybe not so aware of what's going on so you have to keep an eye that they don't just you know go into any sort of power games yeah. it's important and also to find self because an enlightened being is always out there they are not here they have to come back to in fact that's why i bring this particular clear teaching about the reintegration yeah. and about the circumvention of enlightenment yeah. I'm very grateful for you to be here and um, I'll be uh, here I'll be there for you yeah. just little time has to pass yeah. till I don't know I have a feeling I will be doing satsang again but when I don't know hopefully I've yes. experienced in the last years such an enormous wisdom and insight and clarity which is very unusual I've been to many satsangs and yes. especially in time of my um, when when I disappeared I was uh, eagerly searching for somebody and I went to so many teachers and I just saw that they had no experience they were just talking theory and with you it's the first time you see somebody who has a deep profound understanding of life and uh, really that's because you're enlightened <laughs> That's yeah, why you see it. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I see it's still needed that there is this, especially this female wisdom, this yes. uh, female energy, yes. which has something earthly and something. Uh, yes, for the reintegration. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why it also came through a female body. Yeah. This knowledge, because it's very new. This idea of circumventing 
enlightenment is just like it's so new as a possibility for self-realization even without that process. So it's only people like you who have been over there who will who will actually you know fully grasp what I'm saying to start with because you know that it's happening and that's why I'm there for a lot of enlightened beings. They do come because they are, they can sense that what is happening here is actually because you can't fool them anyways. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, because you'll sense it at one point. It comes from surrender, Manik. It comes from mm-hmm. that posture. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. I'm leaving today, so uh-huh. but I hope I will see you somewhere else. Yes, again. yes, surely. Mm-hmm. Have a safe and comfortable yeah, journey. Yes.